Hello, this video is on backend database triggers. We're going to go over three examples. First, adding stuff on sign up. For example, every user can be assigned a random profile picture at the start or be given a template from your backend. Secondly, if one thing is modified, you may want to modify another thing automatically. So if a record is updated, for instance, you may want to compute a new average somewhere else in your database. And thirdly, as you may know from Google Docs, you may want to have an edit history so it shows the user who changed what to what new thing. So for example, task changed the date from Monday to Tuesday. So I'm going to go over those three things. So where do I find backend database triggers? I just go over two backend workflows, which I can only do if I have a paid professional plan. And then I click the empty box, go on new database trigger event. For example, I can call it sign up. And then all I do is I watch one thing in the database. So I watch, for example, users. And whenever a, user, a new user is created or a user is modified, it would trigger the actions you set forth here. We don't want this to always work. We want this only to happen in our case when the user is new and signed up. So what we can do is only when the user before changes profile pic image is empty, then we give them a new image. To do this, we just go over to make changes to thing, user now, and I've prepared for this because in the database I've actually created a new thing called profile pics with a field type image and then underneath app data I uploaded already some profile pictures manually and it will take one of these and randomly add it to the user. To do this, just do a search for then profile pictures and then we can do a random item to take one of them randomly and take the image and that becomes the profile picture of the user. And of course, after this, the profile pic is no longer empty, so this workflow will no longer work. We can also take something else from the database. This example app of mine has FAQs the users can create for the businesses. So you can just have, for example, the selected FAQ, you can give them something from the database. For example, do a search for all FAQs, but only take one with a unique ID. You might have to go to the database to fetch one FAQs. As an example, we can take this one. And then first item as it's singular. So this immediately upon sign up gives them a profile picture and uh, for example, a template from your database. Okay, that's already quite useful. Another thing, so point number two is if one thing is edited, you may want to automatically edit something else. So in my case, for example, looking at the FAQs, if you update an FAQ, maybe you want to automatically update something else too. So again, new database trigger event, FAQ edit, we call it, maybe we call it even more specifically title edit. So it's a type FAQ. And what we can do now is we can compare the old, so FAQ before change title to the new title. So basically all it's doing is kind of looking if the title changed, right? If the title text before is not the title text after. And whenever this happens, we can then make a change to the FAQ. For example, we can change, this is just an example, the subtitle, right? Or we could, you know, count something, make a new average, all these things, right? And what we do now is subtitle, we can do we can do the old subtitle, so from before, but also the new title. So whenever the title is changed, we give the FAQ, the still the old subtitle, but also the new title. So we're referring to the new one as well as the old one, both in the same workflow. This is very useful.
Okay, and thirdly, what we might want to do is an edit history like with Google Docs. So to prepare for this, underneath data types, I've created a data type called edits. Each edit is associated with an FAQ, so a Google Doc as an example. And then you can also add the text that it was before, type text, and the text after. So this works. Again, we can start off, for example, here. Whenever the title is changed, we want to create an edit history. So actually, we have to create a new thing, which is an edit. The FAQ is just the FAQ now. But now we can do the text before. Is the FAQ before change title? And the text after is the FAQ now's title. And that's already it, because if we actually go over to edit, we can see the creator and the date is automatically saved already. And this allows us, kind of like on a Google Doc, of course, here with very little formatting at the start, we can just have a repeating group, which searches all edits made with a certain FAQ, like this page's FAQ or the currently selected one. And then over here, we can show, for example, has this email edited the title from or watch spaces from and we can do text before to now read text after and then on so we need another space of the joys <laughs> and The creation date. So it says, for example, TAS edit uh, the title from Monday to now read Tuesday on May 13th. Oh. Sorry. Okay, so that, that's the edit history already done. Of course, this is also very useful if we have auto binding because auto binding has no workflows associated with it. But because we have the database trigger, immediately when the title is changed, we can also update the subtitle, for instance. Okay, hope this video helped you. Have a good day. Cheers.